Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to the God Factor Podcast. It's your host, Tiffany Renee. This is the podcast where we share the goodness of God, his miracle signs and wonders that he is still performing in the earth today. So remember to love, like, share, comment, because we want to hear from you. We're going to start this thing off with our little segment called Talk to Me. So what is going on in your life? What is he teaching you? What are you learning, seeing, or even being chastised for? Okay. So um, I'll start off just a little bit about what's going on with me. Um, so I am being learned, I'm being taught how to follow directions. So one of the things that God is dealing with me right now is following directions and being consistent on the things that he has told me to do. So in the mornings, I plan with him for my day. Um, and also on the weekends too, on Sundays, I sit and I plan with him for what we'll do for the week. But every morning we kind of execute that out as to what is going to be happening. And one of the things that God has been dealing with me is being consistent. So, you know, um, he's given me blocks of time to do certain things. And so it has been um, an adjustment. I'm working on, you know, watching what I say and speaking only what I want. So it's been an adjustment to really follow what he's given me to do in the site, in the times that he's given me to do them. And then doing a hard stop when he's told me to stop, because obviously when he tells me to stop, that's my time to be able to rest. <laughs> and a lot of times I want to keep going or because I don't feel like I've aligned myself with the actual, um, timeline and really done what he said to do during those times, then guess what? I want to keep going. And so I've had to really be diligent on during this time I'm doing this, during this time I'm doing that. And at the time that he's given me to stop, I just have to stop. So that has not been done completely, but it is definitely something that I am working on. So, um, you know, I want to hear from you guys. What are some things that you know, God is working with you on, like, what are some things that he's showing you or teaching you? And um, what are you learning? Even if it's sometimes chastisement. Um, I was just in my business group meeting and he was talking to me about, you know, um, things that I've spoken over my businesses that are not in alignment with what he wants. So what are the, what are some of those things that you say you want this, but you've been talking to me about what you don't want. And so we know that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And I talked about that earlier. If you found, if you saw my kingdom service announcement on Monday, he talked about wanting to, um, I mean, I talked about broadening your tongue and saying the things that you want and speaking blessings and you can speak curses. And so one of the things he talked to me about was you're talking to me about the things you don't want, but what about the things that you do want? Focus on those things, okay? Let's focus on the things that you want opposed to the things that you don't want. And so um, that's what I've been learning is really sticking to the schedule that he's given me because guess what? The schedule that he's given me, there is built-in rest in that schedule. So I gave my desire of, you know, I want to be able to be productive during these times, basically in the mornings up until a certain time in the afternoons. And then in the afternoons, I want to be able to really wind down, cook for my family and really be present with my family without thinking about all the million things that I have to do in the different businesses um, and projects that he has me on. So that's been one of the things that I've been working on is just working from a place of rest, following directions and staying consistent to the timeline that God has given me. If he said you are going to work on marketing during this time, then work on marketing during that time. If he says that these are the times when you're going to work with clients, 
this is the time that I'm working with clients. And so um, that has been an adjustment. Okay. <laughs> So I want to hear from you guys. You know, you can put in the comments. Um, what are some things that God is working with you on? What are some uh, things that he's doing in your life? What are you learning? What are you seeing? Um, what are you being chastised for? Another thing that um, just being transparent, some of the other things that he's working with me is actually building in the spirit. And so really spending time seeing and calling forth the things that I actually want. So one of the things we you uh you know we talk about is if you can see it you can have it and so um there have been things that i've desired that i haven't actually seen in the spirit yet so i was you're really kind of going after some of those things and asking holy spirit okay is this something that you want me to have or is it just something that i just want and so last night i had a dream uh, actually it was not last night during my nap time. So God gave me nap time, y'all. Working from a place of rest. Anyway, so <laughs> during my nap time today, I started to actually see some of the things I've been working on with him in the morning at three o'clock in the a.m. Because you all know, if you've been following me on Biblically Speaking um, or any of my social media platforms, you know that I have been getting up at three in the morning and spending time with the Father. He's been giving me all these things and um that was also some things that has been an adjustment is getting up that early, spending time, getting my bread for the day and then executing it out. So, yeah, so those are some of the things that God has been dealing with me is really being obedient, staying consistent to the things that he's given me and then working from a place of rest and learning to really do that and seeing that how God has built in rest in my day to so that I may be productive and really function at my highest capacity. And when you think about it, he has also done that even from creation, you know, God get, worked and it talks about the days that he did that. And then he also had time for rest. And also, even when he talks about creating the Sabbath, God is all about rest. He's done all the heavy lifting for you. If we would really partner with him, there is a sense of ease to be able to work this thing out. Because you remember, Jesus has paid it all. So that struggle and strife, we don't have to do because he's already done that. But we don't know that. And uh, we are used to the hustle and bustle, the grind um, of life. Then oftentimes that's what we tend to, to do. And God wants you to work from a place of rest. And so um, that is something that he's been teaching me. And you've been hearing me talk about that for some months now, because I still don't have it all the way down, darling. <laughs> but I am learning and he has grace and he has been working with me on that. So um, tonight's topic um, is going to be, I'm going to talk to you and kind of give my testimony on how God healed my kidneys. Remember, the God factor is all about sharing the goodness of God, the, his miracle signs and wonders that he is still performing today. And so last week I talked about um, and I shared with our, my co-host, Sean, we talked about uh, my Money Girls on Trees conference that we attended and all of the miracle signs and wonders that were done there and just all of the breakthroughs, the gifts, um, just a really good time in the Lord. And so this week, I want to just kind of give my testimony on how God healed me from kidney disease and that God is still in the healing business and um, also give you a little bit of testimony of just seeing God as the great physician. So um, a couple of years ago, actually, I guess it was probably around when the pandemic started, I was diagnosed with uh, level three kidney failure. And so uh, if any of you know me, you know that... Um, my mother is on dialysis and she has suffered from kidney failure. She's had a kidney transplant and then that failed. And so um, that's really a touchy thing for me. So because of her experiences, um, she got on, went through kidney failure, through high blood pressure was, I think, the main cause of that. Um, but she also did some things in her life that were not necessarily healthy. So I 
or your girl um, decided that, OK, the, I see some of the things that she's done. So I'm just not going to do that. And I'm going to really try to focus on making sure I'm drinking water, cranberry juice, things to clean my kidneys and um, foods that would, would, would support that. And what I learned was even though I was doing all of those things, I still had um, some kidney damage. And so um, I understand that everything starts in the spirit, right? So because I know that everything starts in the spirit, when I was diagnosed with that, um, I immediately went to the courts of heaven to ask um, how, how sway, because I've seen my mother go through these things. I put parameters in my life to um, not experience this. And yet here I am. And um, when I got there, <laughs> um, one of the, well, the accusation that was plaguing me the most that the enemy was using was unforgiveness. And so um, I had to go through a uh, time, really um, almost 18 to 24 months almost of going through forgiving people because that unforgiveness unforgiven unforgiveness had set up presidents in my body and it was attacking my kidneys and i wouldn't have known that had i not gone to the courts of heaven and that have been shown to me so when i recognized that that was something that i was dealing with i asked god to really help me or give me the will to forgive and i have to say that it was kind of struck it was a struggle because <laughs> Some of the people that I had to forgive um, are family members who were still doing some of the same things that were offenses to me. And so, or to not just to me, but to my family members as well. And so I had to really go through a process of continuously, consciously forgiving um, and saying, I forgive this person, I bless this person, and I released this person. And that's something that I learned through um, Zari Banks, one of my spiritual mentors, is to forgive, bless, release. And um, and so I would constantly do that. So I just, for almost two years, I had to constantly go through the process of forgiving. And um, there have been times when I thought that I was done. Like I thought that I had forgiven that person and then something would happen and I would feel in my body the rage, okay? And so so because of that, um, I would go through a process of learning to forgive and learning to bless those who have done me wrong and releasing them from that because it was ailing my body. So that was the spiritual part of it is recognizing that I had been holding on to this unforgiveness for years. And although consciously I had started trying to do things in the natural to overcome what was going on with my kidneys or to prevent me from going into kidney failure, there were some things spiritually that I that were still happening that was causing that type of um, disease in my body, that disease in my body. And if you've watched my series on healing the wounded soul, I had to begin to send the dunamis power to those areas, to my kidneys, to that dunamis power is the miracle working power, is the resurrection power. So I had to start speaking to my kidneys because life and death is in the power of the tongue. I had to start speaking to my kidneys, revising them and sending dunamis power to restore the areas in my body that have been wounded or the areas in my soul that have been wounded from these particular people. And I had to go through that process. And it was not an easy process. I shouldn't say it wasn't easy. It was, it took time to uproot that bitterness. It took time to replace that with forgiveness. Um, and let me see if I, I want to say, um, so, I went through this and I had to do it a couple of times. Okay. Um, this is called, Oh Lord, forgive them. This is by Dr. Zari Banks. And it is a 30 day days for praying for your enemies and, or praying for people who um, 
just have not done you right. Um, and so this is the tool. This is one of the tools that helped me. You know, God will give you the tools, honey, to overcome these things. But I started praying for my enemies or uh, people who had done me wrong. And I want to just go over one of the prayers. One of the things she starts off with, and I, and this is in my um, in my Bible too, because this is how God just always, you know, Zara is one of my special people. So anyway, God gives me these people that walks life out with me. I'm just, because he loves me and I'm his favorite. I know you think you are, but I'm really his favorite. So anyway, in the beginning, it says, obey God and leave all the consequences to him. That's Dr. Charles Stanley. And my actual Bible, um, my Bible that I'm reading now or reading through now is Life Principles. This is my second time reading through it. And it's by Dr. Charles Stanley. But so she goes through and she gives you like a scripture reference. And then she gives you a prayer to write down. And then she gives you some notes, some places where you can write some of the things. So I'll just give you an example of this. And if you go to 1123, that life um 1123 ministries she there's a shop there where you can shop zari's books but this one really helped me and this is not the first time i've done this uh, when i was going through forgiving my father i went through this i did this um once before um but this was particularly i did it for people who had offended me that i had that unforgiveness in my body um and it was affecting my kidneys so um, I'm just going to read day one, just as an example. It says, so now Israel, what do you think God expects from you? Just this, live in his presence in holy reverence, follow the role he sets out for you, love him, serve God, your God with everything you have in you, obey his commandments and regulations of God that I'm commanding you today. Live a good life. This is Deuteronomy 10, 12 through 13. So that's the scripture reference. And then she gives a prayer. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to be obedient to your commands. I praise you because you're true to your word. I'm sorry for the times I've doubted you and had to miss out on blessings you've planned for me and worse, required discipline. I know you want what's best for me. And because I'm choosing to obey, I'm clearing the way for the miraculous to happen in my life. Come on now. I thank you because... You're gracious and merciful. Please continue to show grace and mercy too. And it has a space there where you would put the person for as long as it takes them to learn to honor you. Lord, please forgive them. Don't hold the wrongs they've committed against me and my family against them. Draw them to yourself, Father, and bless them to know you, to know you intimately. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And she gives another scripture. Don't ever say, I'll get you for that. Wait for God. He'll settle the score. And, you know, that's just saying you don't have to do the vengeance. He does it. So she starts with the scripture, gives a prayer, and then ends with the scripture and gives you place to write down. And so I had to do that to go through that. And actually, I might have to um, do that again because I, girl, I have to really, y'all, I have to work on that spirit of offense because people be saying stuff to me and it'd be, it'd be stupid. <laughs> y'all. Let God, God's working on me. Okay. He's not done. He's still doing miraculous things through me and uh, for me. And so, but sometimes people be saying stuff to me or they try to um, justify dumb behavior. And I be taking offense to that sometimes because I'm like, hello, are you listening? Do you think I'm dumb? But, um, <laughs> So anyway, I might have to go through this again on some other stuff because in my business, there have been some hiccups. Like I just have been getting hitting some walls in one of my businesses and it was because of unforgiveness. So child, I have to work on this unforgiveness for some time. But anyway, back to the focus. He healed my kidneys. The first thing I had to realize was that I had unforgiveness for some people and I had to go through the process of of forgiving and it took me almost two whole years okay to do that to get all of that gunk out so sometimes these things take time especially if they're deeply rooted and some of these people had offended me when i was a child nine years old it's yeah it was so i have been carrying that around for all this time and it had set presidents in my kidneys and um so anyway 
Holy Spirit revealed that to me. He revealed that that was what was the accusation was the unforgiveness. And I went through that process of forgiving these people. And like I said, it took me, it may not take you that long, but girl, when people be doing stuff to me, I'll be like, I'm, I'm done with you. Done. I don't want to deal with you ever again. <laughs> so, <laughs> but these people are, some of them are in my family. So I've had to forgive. So I had to go through the process of forgiveness. And then after um, that, I did also have to start adjusting in the natural. So I had to do the spiritual part and then I had to do the natural part. And um, the natural part was I had high blood pressure. Now, one of the things, and um, I have, my doctor is, my primary care physician is a minister. Um, she's a PhD. Um, she is a medical MD doctor, but she is also has her PhD in clinical psychology. You know, God be sending me these wonderful people. And so um, <laughs> um, she was talking about how she went back to get her PhD because of the correlation between in the health industry, people are dealing with the spiritual side. And a lot of times they don't understand how that spiritual side is affecting them physically in their bodies. And so she went to get her PhD to be able to help with that. But I was talking to her about some of the things and she was just expressing to me how sometimes, um, especially with high blood pressure, it could be the stress. And so those things that I'm carrying around are causing my blood, is causing my blood pressure to be elevated. So um, I had to go into, you know, prayer again to find out what are some of the things that I'm stressing over that's also causing my, my blood pressure to be elevated. And all of that was linked to fear. So, um, you know, I grew up in poverty and I declared that that was not going to be my portion moving forward. And but all of the work that I was doing was in the hustle and the grind, which most a lot of us are doing is out of fear. And so the fear of I don't want to fear that I don't want to feel that anymore. If you have gone home after school and turned the lights on and don't then come on or gone into the refrigerator and things have gone bad because the lights have been off and you've had to eat ketchup sandwiches and stuff that it does something to you so anyway that fear was really driving me to function at in high levels and get things done but i was doing it from a place of fear so because of that i was always in a high intensity my stress level was always high um and so and i stumped something that i still work with today like really having to overcome that spirit of fear um, and the spirit of lack, um, because I've been there before. And so anyway, Holy Spirit revealed that to me. And so then I had to start working on that, like, okay, replacing those thoughts of fear with, of lack to those thoughts of abundance and really decreeing things over my life, decreeing Deuteronomy 818 over my life, um, decreeing, uh, Philippians 419 over my life and begin to really, um, believe that God will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. That's my portion because I am heir to the throne, joint heir with Christ. Um, it's, you know, I obey God and allow the consequences to be up to him. And so really rewiring my mind to believe those things. So I had to do that by declaring the word of God. Remember, we can speak blessings or we can speak curses. Well, in my autopilot my mindset i had been running on fear so i had to pluck those things out and start really replacing them with the word of god and so once i started doing that i was able to break the back of poverty over my life um i had already um done that by this time but i was able to release the thought that you're not going to have enough that i live in a place of more than enough because i live in abundance because one i'm a tither i'm a um, big giver and god told me to trust him in those things. And so he has said that he will open up the storehouse of heaven and pour me out, you know, blessings that I don't have room enough to receive. Really calling God on these things into my life so that I could see the manifestation of it. So I had to learn though, all of these things had to be revealed to me through revelation that I was living from a place of fear, which was causing me to stress, which was causing me to have high blood pressure. Um, I also had all of this unforgiveness that was causing it 
affecting my kidneys, but also the blood pressure was also affecting my kidneys. So once I started focusing on getting the spiritual things together, my blood pressure started coming down. Um, and then um, I started adjusting my eating because also there are things that we can do here on the spirit, on the physical side. You know, a lot of times people say things are hereditary. Well, it's not really in the DNA. It's what your diet is the things that you've been eating. Well, if my grandmama has high blood pressure, my mom has high blood pressure, my great great grandmama had high blood pressure, and all of my dad's side has high blood pressure. And then I look at the foods that we're eating and the things that we're putting in our bodies, those also cause elevated blood pressure. So made those adjustments, start speaking to my kidneys, went through the forgiveness, um, started speaking the word of God about decreeing things that um Philippians 4, 19, Deuteronomy 8, 18. Um, and really just believing uh, Mark 11, that I can speak to a thing, uh, what I say, I can move mountains with my words. Um, Mark 11, 23, that was God gave me the, that scripture for a year. And so I would just start decreeing that over my life. And, um, you know, God would give me instructions don't put this, use this instead. And, um, you know, God would give me all of these things to do and I would start implementing them. So he would give, he gave me spiritual strategies, which was the forgiveness. He gave me a tool to use to go through the forgiveness. Um, he gave me scriptures to be, begin to decree, to reprogram my mind, to get my mind from lack to abundance. Um, and then he started giving me things to change in my diet of how I could still have things to taste good and how some things, you know, so I stopped eating a lot of meats um, because though that protein in the meats can affect your kidneys. Um, so I stopped eating a lot of fleshy foods um, and started increasing my fruits and vegetables, really my fruits. Um, and, you know, just started doing little things little by little. And so before you know it, I go to the doctor and the, my nephrologist had, I kept having a nephrologist appointment, but for whatever reason, for the last six months of 2022, I just kept missing the appointment. Like it was always, first of all, my nephrologist is far away from where I was living at the time and now I'm much closer. And it just was I just kept missing the appointment and having to reschedule. Plus, I had to have blood work done before. And so it was like six months of me trying to get into the nephrologist and just couldn't. I just it just wouldn't happen. So anyway, fast forward to the beginning of the year, I go have my blood work done and then I go and see the nephrologist. And he comes in and he has like this really big, happy, uh, happy uh, look on his face. Right. And I, so I'm like, okay, what's going on? So he has had this, has this happy look on his face. And I'm like, wait, what is, you know, why are you so happy? Why are you so, so uh, excited? And we're going to take a quick break here because we got bills to pay for this podcast. So we're going to do a little quick break here and go to our sponsors. So we're going to do a quick little, as we're talking about the health part, we're going to do a quick little um, commercial here. And um, one of the things that not I have been doing, I hadn't done this before, but my husband has been doing with um, his health is we have been taking the ultimate classic. And I'm going to get pull this up here. We're going to pull that up here. We have been taking the ultimate classic. This is your minerals, um, minerals, vitamins, nutrition, nutrients. So we all know that and we've heard this is one of the supplements that I had started implementing into my diet. Um, so one of the things that we know and we've heard this because if you've ever done like sea moss or anything like that, then you know um, that our body needs over... 92 essential vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and fatty acids every single day to function at optimal capacity. 
say that again, you need 92 essential vitamins, minerals, amino acids, fatty acids every single day to, um, to really function at optimal capacity. And currently, for whatever reasons, our farmers aren't, are only required to provide three in their soil. So you're not getting those nutrients, minerals, vitamins, and amino acids in your foods because they're not even, the foods aren't even being grown with them. So what we have here with Longevity, we have what's called the Ultimate Classic. And this is a multivitamin mineral complex um, that gives you those things. It's plant-derived minerals, amino acids, and other beneficial nutrients to support your daily nutritional needs in a highly absorbent like liquid form. So we've been taking this every single day. And just for, you know, my, my husband is also dealing with some kidney failure. Um, and so we are working on Holy Spirit helping us to give us strategies to overcome that. But he started taking this and um, within two weeks, he lost over 10 pounds. So he's been taking this and we've been also doing a, li a liver cleanse and he has lost 10 pounds. And the reason why we went and start func function, like focusing on that is because he has that, that pop the dad bod and you'll see a lot of the men with their protruding bellies. And so I asked my grandmother, who is a former nurse, I was like, you know, what is that about? And she said, you probably want to get your liver checked. And so he did. And he had a little bit of fatty liver. So we started doing that. And then we also um, started doing, uh, we started him to taking this um, supplement. So we, so every morning he takes the ultimate classic and then he takes the liver and gallbladder health. And from that, just within two weeks, he had already lost 10 pounds and he's been doing it and feeling way better. Like um, it's just allow him to have more energy. Typically around two o'clock, he's really sluggish. So he'll come home, take a nap and then have to go on with his day. But with this, he's actually had more energy. So um, this these products. OK, this one's not working. OK, well, well, these this product. This product allowed is for anyone to add a daily liquid nutritional multivitamin multivitamin to their diet. And if you're like me, I know CMOS, they talk about that, but it's disgusting. I know they have gels and things like that, um, but this works for me. Um, and if you want it, you can always click the link below and we will put those links below for you to shop that. And that can help you with your health because that is something else that um, we used to really start helping us. And this helps overall health because it provides you with those nutrients. OK. All right. So that's that. And another little thing here is if you want to support us. Have you gotten in your The God Factor merchandise? If you would like to support the podcast, you can sow a seed and get you some of this merchandise. I mean, look at it. It's really cool. You can wrap your faith with The God Factor because it is The God Factor that gives us miracle signs and wonders in our life and helps us to be able to overcome by his grace. You can go to thegodfactor.com, T-H-E-E, godfactor.com and shop your heart out. And we really do appreciate it. Actually, we've been seeing some we launched these the last week and we've been seeing some good sales come in. So thank you guys for supporting us in that way. And last but certainly not uh last but certainly not least, if you also are one of those billionaires, right? And you really believe that you are heir to the throne and joint heir with Christ, you can also go to billionaire Stannis. Um website here and you can also go to billionaire status and you can shop with us here and you can get a bunch of apparel drinkware um everything that you need billionaire h-e-i-r because you are heir to the throne and joint heir with christ so if you want to do that you can support their billionaire boss chick as well as your billionaire status uh, uh merch so Back to our scheduled scheduled broadcast. So the doctor comes in, right? And he's all excited. And he says, oh, my God. He's um, Indian. So he says, oh, my God, your uh, 
results are phenomenal. Like I, what have you been doing? Whatever you're doing, continue to do it because now I have to change the doc, change the diagnosis. You're no longer um, in a chronic level three. Like you're, you're at your, there's no more. It doesn't show. It's just not showing that you have any kidney failure. He's like, whatever you're doing, continue to do that. He was like, your blood pressure is good. Your levels, everything looks great. And so I'm just like smiling because I know that it was the God factor. I know that had God not released to me or not revealed to me and give me revelation of the unforgiveness, if he had not released to me that I have been stressing, causing my blood pressure to go be high, functioning from a place of fear, had I not done all the those things on the spiritual side, and then had I not asked him to help me to change my diet, help me to begin to uh, put things in my body that are going to be nutritionists and adding the um, vitamins, minerals, amino acids, fatty acids, really taking in those supplements and then also cutting out my, you know, lowering my salt intake um, and changing the way that I cook foods. God had given me that prescription. And because of that, it had completely turned around what looked like level three chronic disease was now no more. So God is the great physician. He is still the healer, Jehovah Rapha. He is our healer and he wants to heal you. All you have to do is believe and consult with him. Go to the great physician, sit with him, learn, and he will Listen, he will tell you great and mighty things that you did not know. He'll give you strategies to overcome. He'll give you the grace to be able to execute it out. And just like I was able to get an, a miracle, so can you. Just like I was able to get a miracle, so can you. He can do miracles. He's still doing miracle signs and wonders. Um, And so I would love to hear from you all um, if you have any stories like that, you know, where God is just... um giving you strategies to overcome and you've seen the fruit of it with somebody. Because I know when I first went on this journey, I was talking to some believers who was like, you know, well, there's no reversing kidney failure. There's no cure for that. Listen, Jesus has a cure for every single thing. Okay. The question is, are you willing? Because listen, what I had to do to get my miracle, I had to go through a process of forgiveness. And I had to press into that thing. It took me almost two years to get the unforgiveness out of my system. Hello, are you listening? <laughs> you know, so that's that something that you take lightly. It's not something that you pray about and just leave it there. I had to contend for that to be a reality in my life. I had to contend for that to be a reality in my life. And it took me two years to do that. So sometimes we're not prepared or we don't want to go through or do what it's going to actually take to see the miracle. Now, can he do it in minutes? Absolutely. Yeah. On the spot, suddenly God is still the God of suddenly. He's still the God of um, turning things around in 24 hours for you. He can do all of those things. He can do exceedingly abundantly above anything we can think or ask. However, sometimes because he deals with us individually. Sometimes what took me two years may take you 30 minutes, you know, um, or it may take you longer. The question is, are you willing to contend for your faith? And are you willing to believe that God will do this thing for you? And so I was, my faith was wild enough to believe that God would do this for me. And I was obedient to what he told me to do. And what did Dr. Charles Stanley say? Obey God and leave all the consequences to him. So what? because I was willing to obey, I was able to get what others said is not possible. God said it's possible. And remember, all things are possible with God. So because I was able, I believed and I was willing to put in the work, I was willing to contend for my faith, then God was willing to give me a miracle. And I say it's a miracle because Medicine says that you can't be, medicine says that you cannot overcome kidney failure, that once your kidneys are damaged, that's it. And God said 
no, 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 no. <laughs> Not today, honey. Not this for you. You can have them. You get a miracle. You get a miracle. You get a miracle. So God blessed me and allowed me to have my kidneys restored to the point where the doctor was just like, wow, I've never seen anything like this. And I knew that it was the God factor that caused my kidneys to be completely restored from his dunamis power and from his saving grace. It's your billionaire box chick, H-E-I-R, heir to the throne, joint heir of Christ, here to equip you to live this kingdom life. And this has been an episode of The God Factor Podcast, where we talk about the miracles, signs, and wonders that God is still performing in the earth today. We want to hear from you. Remember to love, like, and share. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And then in a few weeks, these will be uploaded to podcast to um, Spotify, where you can listen to the acts, the actual podcast. It has been a pleasure speaking with you guys. I love you so much. And so does God. Remember, God is still in the, in the miracle working business and he wants to perform a miracle for you. And this is the month of miracles. So you should have an expectation of getting them. And I want to hear from you. Until next time, you guys be blessed. Yeah. Okay.